ask Allah to forgive their sins, have mercy on their souls, and members and their relatives, patience uh, for what uh, befell them. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We also want to remind the community, inshallah, that the Qurbani, the epic Qurbani service is open now. So for those of you who want to do Qurbani, alhamdulillah, uh, epic is facilitating that in different countries. So in, uh, depending on which country you do it, the price can vary. Um, you can check the prices on the kiosk, inshallah ta'ala, the kiosks on your way out, whether in the back or in the hallway here, they both have the information of the Qurbani. Uh, you can also zell the Qurbani amount by uh, writing Qurbani at epicmasjid.org, saving that and zelling that amount uh, with uh, a, f uh, a memo or a note on the bottom mentioning which country you want to send the Qurbani to. Uh, it can be a, a, a lamb, it could be a cow, depending on which country the prices are going to vary. Right? And they vary a lot. They go from $80 all the way to $260, depending on where you want to send it, inshallah. Barakallah feekum. And now we begin, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على صلاة حي على صلاة أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه 
ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين يقول تبارك وتعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we send our peace and blessings upon our noble Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. And I remind myself and yourselves, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, on this blessed and joyous occasion of Yawmul Jum'ah to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us of this in the noble Quran when he said in the translation of the meaning, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah the way He should be feared, and do not die except in the state of complete submission to Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we die in the state. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our final words in this dunya, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take our souls when we are in the state of obedience to Him. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the memories of everyone after us, or to make our memories in the minds and the hearts of everyone after us the best of memories. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. There was a person who committed a sin and drank what they should not have drank. A person who had a few cups of something intoxicating, something that was described by our predecessors as Umm al Khabaith, the mother of all evils. Al Khamr, alcohol. And as they drank, a little bit too much. Of course, there's no too much because the first drop of it is haram and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they drank enough to be intoxicated, to drive down the 544 and then get stopped by the police to be given a ticket for driving under the influence. Although us as Muslimin sitting here in Yawm al-Jum'ah, perhaps many of us, insha'Allah, all of us, do not drink or do not engage in these types of actions. But we see this as something <coughs> like a heinous crime. This is something that's bad. Not only getting drunk, but to also drive and risk their own life and the lives of others in the process. It's a bad thing, right? Driving under the influence. But today's khutbah is about something even worse than that. It's not about driving a car or a vehicle under the influence. It's for those who live under the influence. Not the influence of alcohol per se, but the influence of everything negative and toxic and intoxicating around them. There's no doubt, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, that we 
get influenced by our surroundings. Every single one of us is influenced by the things around them, whether it be the people around them, whether it be you know, our classmates or colleagues, or sometimes the place that we're in. We decide to go to a place that isn't necessarily the most positive environment for us. Or even social media. Sometimes we are in groups, in chats. We befriend people on social media. We follow people on social media. Sometimes we watch things on TV, shows and movies and the like that all influence us to become someone other than who we are. At first, a person can see themselves as resilient, as strong, as capable of overcoming, as someone who had a righteous upbringing, someone whose mother and father taught them day and night what is right and what is wrong, someone who grew up thinking they have a conscience, who grew up knowing that this is right and this is wrong. But under all of these surrounding influences, they can be shaken. And they take their strength and their upbringing and their conscience, the, what Allah put in their heart, for granted. They over-exaggerate their abilities to decipher right and wrong. Therefore, submitting to the influence around them. Is it a sign of weakness to be influenced by others, my brothers and sisters? Absolutely not. We all are influenced by our surroundings. We all are influenced by our surroundings. As a matter of fact, not only our surroundings, but even the way we dress, even the way we talk, even... You know, subhanAllah, when, when I, all of us have, we know, young children. You grab a young boy or girl, and you dress them. Dress the little boy like the imam of the haram. And you're going to notice that they act differently. Because of the way they dress. And this is what Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah, said in, the, in his book, Iqtida Salat al-Mustaqim. He said, people, they... They emulate what they're surrounded by. So if they're in the halaqat of Qur'an, they're in the masjid, they're going to act like the people of the masjid. They're around imams, they're around scholars, they're going to act like scholars. They're in class, in, in high scale, the best universities in America, they're going to talk like the people that attend these universities. But if they're around evil people, they go to bad places without mentioning the places, and you all know what I'm talking about. They go to bad places. They should not expect anything but the fact that they're going to act, imitate and emulate the people in these places. If they watch movies day and night for hours upon hours, let them not expect, even if they're half of the Qur'an, inshallah, they memorize a hundred thousand hadith or even a million hadith after the Qur'an. If they surround themselves with negativity, with toxic environment, no matter how much they know, it's not going to help them. Because what's around us or what surrounds us affects us without us knowing. In a famous story, there was a man who was a mushrik, his name was Thumama ibn Uthal. Thumama ibn Uthal was one of the leaders of Yamama. And he had a deep animosity to Muhammad sallallahu He hated the Prophet sallallahu He hated him to the core and was ready to give anything and offer anything. And he had routes of trade between Thumama and Quraysh. And, in the, and he was one of their biggest business allies. So Thumam ibn Uthal, on his way from, from, uh, from, from uh, Yamama to, to uh, Mecca, a group of the Muslimin caught him, right? And 
they took him to the Prophet They ambushed him and they took him to the Prophet They told the Prophet look who we caught. It's Thumam ibn Uthal, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet said, Khair, good. He said, what should we do, Ya Rasulullah? He said, tie him to the pillar in the masjid. He said, what? In the house of Allah? In the Masjid Nabawi? The second holiest site in Islam to bring this mushrik who carries animosity to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this much animosity? Yes, bring him and tie him in the masjid. They tied him to the pillar in the masjid. Thumama was sitting there and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to him the next day. He's like, Ya Thumama, what do you have to say? He said, Oh Muhammad, you caught the right man. If you want wealth, we'll give you wealth. If you want peace, we'll give you peace. Whatever you need, I got you. I'm the right man. You made a smart choice by catching me because I can give you whatever you want. And I know the, the need that you're in here in Medina. Because the Muslims were not that strong at the time. There weren't that many in number. And they were surrounded by the mushrikeen. The Prophet ﷺ just ignored him. Said, okay, Thumama, you're not ready yet. He left the next day. He said, yeah, Thumama, what do you have to say? He said the same thing. The third day, he said, Ya Thumama, what do you have to say? He said the same thing. The Prophet ﷺ, he told the Sahaba, okay, let him go. Let him go. So Thumama left after saying the same thing. He left and he stayed under a tree close outside of Medina. He did ghusl. He changed his garment and he came back to the Prophet ﷺ. And he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. He converted to Islam, رضي الله He said, Ya Muhammad, I, when I came here, there was not a person on earth that was more despised to me than you. But now, you are the most beloved to me in the world. I don't know how. It just happened. He said, I hated the Muslimin. He said, Islam was the most despised religion, now it's the most beloved. Medina was the most despised place to me, now it's the most beloved. Because of what? Because of the influence. Because, ya ikhwan, we're all living under the influence. Remember driving under influence? No, we're all living under influence. But the only thing we control in this life of ours is who influences us. And this is why in Islam, our Prophet ﷺ, he taught us that who we befriend is the most, one of the most important things in this world to us. Who we stay around. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-mar'u ala deen khalile. The person is on the religion of the person that they befriend. What? Ya Rasul, what do you mean? What if I'm, I'm a good person? I, was, I memorized Qur'an. I knew good. I used to pray. I used to fast. I still fast. Alhamdulillah, I know good from bad. But my friends, they're all druggies. My friends, they're all alcoholics. My friends, they all go out and party every weekend. These are my friends, but I'm not like them. I'm different. The Prophet ﷺ said, your deen is their deen. Your deen is their deen. No difference. He said, Al-mar'u ala deen khalil. It's not me, it's Rasulullah ﷺ that said this. Al-mar'u ala deen khalil. You are upon the deen of your friend. Meaning, look at the religion of your friend. If they're honest, they're trustworthy, they're religious, they pray, they do good acts, they're obedient to their parents, then... You are upon their deen. Alhamdulillah, you're doing good. But if you look at your friend, and your friend is not that good of a person, your friend lies, steals, cheats, goes behind their parents and does all types of stuff. If your friend, and this is even for the adults, it's not only for the youth. If the friend that you stay and hang around with, you go out to coffee shops with, you go out to restaurants with, you meet up and play soccer and whatever with, but they're cheaters, they're backbiters, they backstab, they do all types of evil. Then you are upon their deen. Who said it? 
الصادق المصدوق الذي لا ينطق عن الهوى the one who does not speak in vain عليه الصلاة والسلام the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he also told us in a hadith that shaitan is close to a person that's alone because sometimes we feel like oh I don't need friends I could be alone in the house you know I'm, I'm just by myself no you're not alone because shaitan is next to you when you're alone a shaitan قريب من المرء وهو من الاثنان أبعد كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم he said shaitan is close to a single person by himself just like a wolf likes to attack the sheep that's, a, that's straying out away from the rest of the flock. The same thing with shaitan, he attacks the one that's alone. وَهُوَ مِنَ الْإِثْنَانِ أَبْعَدْ From two, he's a little bit more distant. From three, more distant. How about a whole jama'ah of righteous people? A whole jama'ah of good people. Is shaitan close or far? No, he's very far. Wait, Shaykh, but does this mean like if I'm with a bad friend, shaitan is far from us? No, because your friend is shaitan himself. Of course not. If the friend is bad, then we have to be careful. If the friend is the person that's telling us to do all types of evil, then we have to be careful. If our friend, the one who we talk to, who we message at night, it's 12 a.m., I'm in my bed, I'm in my phone like, hey, what's up, what you doing? Oh, there's that, you want to go out? Yeah, let's go to Taco Bell. And then all you're talking about is haram. This is big trouble. Eventually, it might take a year, two, three, four years, five years, but wallahi, one year. Befriend, in, in a few years, befriending someone like this, you're going to look back and say, man, I was so good back in those days. It's probably I used to pray on time. I used to actually know how to read Quran, now I forgot. You know, I had this person who, mashallah, yani he, he went on to study Islamic studies, or this person went on to become an engineer. He's married, he's doing good, never drank, never did anything, alhamdulillah, bad. I used to be, I used to roll with these guys, but now, subhanAllah, look at myself. You won't even recognize yourself being with people like this, subhanAllah. But the way to rectify it is to change it from now. And like I always tell the youth, like I always tell the youngsters, and this is an advice for the ones who are older and younger alike, drop them before they drop you. Drop them before they drop you, because when they drop you, there's going to be no coming back. When they drop you, it's over. When they drop you, it's into Jahannam. When they drop you, it's Yawma Ya'abdul Zalimu Ala Yaday. It's the day that the oppressor bites on their hand and says, Ya Laytani, Lam Attakhid Fulan al Khalila. I wish I never befriended this person. Imagine, they're going to hell, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Furqan, they will be saying as they're being dropped into the hellfire. I wish this person was not my friend. Why are they thinking of their friend while they see Jahannam in front of them? They could be thinking of zina. They could be thinking of drugs. They could be thinking of alcohol. But you know what? The problem was that they were living under the influence. They were living under the influence. Of who? Of their friends. We seek refuge in Allah from friends like this. We seek refuge in Allah from people who drag us to doing evil, who influence, and, uh, who influence us into doing bad. We seek refuge in Allah from anyone who gets us away from Allah's pleasure. We ask Allah on this holy day of Yawm al-Jumu'ah to make our friends in this life the best of friends. And if they are astray, to guide them to the straight path and to guide us to the straight path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this blessed day of Yawm al-Jumu'ah, when there's an hour that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the dua of whoever makes dua, we ask Allah to make our friends the ones who take us into Jannah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our friends the ones who look 
at us, they find us in trouble and they take us out of mischief. They take us out of evil. They remind us of good. They take us to the Quran. They drag us to the masjid and they remind us of our Islamic identity. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu ma sami'atum wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Fastaghfiruhu inna huwa al-ghafurur rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين First and foremost I remind myself and yourselves to fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى in our relationships to fear Allah سبحانه وتعالى in who we associate with to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who we allow to influence us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us clear guidelines in how we should engage with our friends. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, or he implied in one of the hadith that I'm going to mention, that our friends should be in, in grades. Not everyone is in the inner circle. There are people that we bring very close. And there are people that we are okay with. They're good, mashallah, but they're not the inner ones. The ones who are the inside are the ones who are the most taqi, who are the most God-fearing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Qulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, alayhi salatu wa salam, la ya'kulu ta'amaka illa taqi. Right? Or he said, لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي. He said, do not befriend except a believer. Do not befriend except someone who is a believer, who believes in Allah, believes in the hereafter, believes in Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, believes in Islam. That's who we should have as close friends. But then there's a closer circle. You see, there's the outside. Befriend what? Befriend a mu'min, a believer. وَلَا يَأْكُلُ طَعَامَكَ إِلَّا تَقِي And do not let your food be eaten, your own food, meaning in your house. Not feeding, of course, as Muslimin, we feed everyone. Muslim, non-Muslim, whoever is in need, we feed everyone. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We can invite anyone. But here, the Prophet ﷺ is saying, you do not bring in your close circle, invite into your house, into your kitchen, to open your refrigerator and whip up some breakfast, you know, and sit down to see your family, your kids, talk to your wife, give salams to everyone around you, except for someone who is God-fearing. See, the ones who you bring close in, that has to be a God-fearing person. Who said this? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? There's a wisdom behind it, ya ikhwan. Because the God-fearing, when you bring them close, they preserve. They either see something good, and they say, Alhamdulillah, and they go spread it about you. This is a God-fearing person. Or they see something that's not good. And they say what? They say, Subhanallah, you know, I'll conceal it. I won't expose it. I won't say it to anyone. As, as opposed to the one who is not God-fearing, who does not care what people say, would go and see something that's bad, something that can be misinterpreted, and they'll go take it out of proportion. Tell everybody, well, you know what I saw at this prison, man? This person had this and this and that in their house. This person was like this and this and that. Their kids said this and this and that. So we don't bring just anyone to our close circles. Who said this? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is how important it is to bring in and to, have and to surround ourselves with people who can positively influence us because real, realistically speaking, brothers and sisters, we're all living under the influence. Every single one of us. We're influenced. We're influenced by our family, by our relatives, by our spouses, by our friends, by our kids, by our classmates, by our colleagues, right? By social media, whoever we befriend and read about. Don't overestimate your ability to, dis to, to, to separate, distinguish good and bad. Someone that's on a group that's always bashing on marriage. Let's say you're a bachelor 
and everyone, your mom, your dad, your family, the imam of the masjid, everyone said, Ya akhi, you know you got to get married. Sister, you know you got to get married. You know, it's about time, subhanAllah. It's, the, it's about that time of life where you got to, you know, take that next step. But you're on these groups, on all these social media, you're listening to these videos on YouTube and listening to these podcasts that are always bashing on marriage, bashing on the sunnah that Allah created for us, this great sunnah of our beloved Prophet Wasallam. Do not think that you as a Muslim can distinguish, good man, you're going to be affected by it. Subconsciously, you're going to think of everything they're saying. It's going to be in the back of your head. And it's going to deter you from doing good. What's ultimately good for you, subhanAllah. Someone who has a friend around them that's always talking about their parents. Oh, my parents are whack. You know my parents, they're always... Uh, not letting me do this. Alhamdulillah, your parents are good. They're only telling you to do good. They give you opportunities. They're taking you out. They're doing everything for you. But you know what? Your friend's parents, it's a different story. Eventually, you're going to start going through the same struggle as your friend without even knowing it. You're going to see something in your own parent. Right? Because of what? Because of the influence. So the only thing you can control is who influences you. So if you see, and this is my advice to my brothers and sisters today, if someone is influencing you the wrong way, and you get a hunch, you get a feeling, you don't like the direction it's going, it ain't worth it to waste time, to waste life on someone that's changing you to bad and you're not changing them to anything better. If alhamdulillah you're a good influence on them, then stay around them. If you are the one that's like, no, akhi, you know, or ukhti, you know, that's haram. You know, let's not do this. Let's do this instead. And they listen to you, then stay around them. But if they're the ones dragging you to do bad all the time, then you got to drop them before they drop you. And dropping you, it might be, it's going to be too late. It's going to be in Jahannam like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Furqan. We seek refuge in Allah from this. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the straight path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us righteous companionship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a companionship that will unite us in Jannah al-Firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the straight path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our spouses, our parents, our children, our grandchildren. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with a progeny that worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not commit uh, shirk and do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah to forgive us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give a hasty freedom to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uplift the occupation from Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory to our brothers and sisters in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Mubarak. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give victory and to uplift the dhulam, the oppression from our brothers and sisters in China, in Kashmir, in Burma, in Yemen, in Syria, in Iraq, in Libya, in Egypt. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free them from the hands of the oppressors. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be from the Muslimin that remember them in our du'as. We ask Allah to make us from the Muslimin who think of them as their own brothers and sisters, as we should. We ask Allah to forgive us, have mercy on us. Ibad Allah, inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita إذ القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى اعتدلوا straighten your rows fill in the gaps 
Um, if you see a gap in front of you, inshallah, you can carry your musalla and move on to this next row. Do not leave any gaps in between you unless you're praying in a row where there are gaps. But uh, other than that, you shouldn't leave any gaps, inshallah. If your musalla is taking too much space, you can always fold it in half uh, to make space. Jazakumullah khair. Do not leave any spaces in front of you. There's a space here in the front row. Allahu Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Din إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالها وأخرجت الأرض أثقالها وقال الإنسان ما لها يومئذ تحدث أخبارها بأن ربك أوحى لها يومئذ يصدر الناس أشتاتا ليروا أعمالهم فمن يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يرى ومن يعمل مثقال ذرة شرا يرى الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر
بسم الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله uh, السلام عليكم quick request um, whoever wants to pray sunnah inshallah just wait for one or two minutes until everyone leaves um, so nobody's crossing in front of anyone during Salah. Jazakumullah khair. 